Hey DJ Tech Tools, this is Smitten and today I'll be talking to you about how you can create a dual boot DJ environment for your Windows machine. Here you can see we have a standard laptop which probably shipped with Windows 7 or maybe if you have an old laptop, XP or Vista. What we're going to do today is talk to you about how you can move away from just having one machine that has to do everything to running two instances or two copies of Windows on the same machine so you can segregate them out for different tasks and specifically DJ. Here you can see we've got two versions of Windows 7 on the same machine, one for Tractor and one for everything else. Here's the Boot Partition Manager that gives us the opportunity to select which partition we want to load up. And it doesn't always have to be Windows. Here we have an example of using Windows and Linux both again on the same machine. In today's project, we're actually going to be doing two Windows 7 installations side by side on the same machine and running one of them as our main tractor partition and another as our backup. So if we're playing out, we've got a problem, we can switch from the main to the backup and be up and running again in minutes. Let's take a look at what we'll be doing in this video. Firstly, we're going to set our machine to boot from the DVD drive. Then we're going to go through the standard Windows installation process. And in that process, we're going to select the custom advanced option to create the first partition for the first install. And we'll also leave room on the disks that we can go in and repeat the process and use the remainder of the drive space for the second boot. Once that installation is complete, we're going to make a few edits to give this first boot partition an easy to recognize identity. And once that base install is complete, we'll restart the machine and do the whole thing again. Except this time we'll use the remainder of the hard disk that we didn't use in the first installation. After completing the second install, we'll go through and ensure that each install has its own boot name so it's easy to recognize. We'll also change the drive labels to match the bootloader name and we'll use a tool called msconfig to define our default boot partition which will load up the right boot partition if we don't make a selection at bootloader time. It's not a complicated process, but it does require time and attention to detail and not cutting any corners. So in terms of what you'll need, a computer obviously, Windows installation media, not to be confused with restore disks, drivers for your machine, internet access, and enough time and patience to be able to get this done properly. So now let's take a look at installing the first partition or the first instance of Windows. You're going to pop your Windows CD in and make sure that your system is set up to boot from the CD-ROM device and you can look at different instructions on how to do that online. This is the standard Windows install. We're going to go in, kick off the install. We have the terms and conditions which we're going to accept and then we're going to move into accepting custom or the advanced option. By selecting new, this is where we can go in and build our different drive partitions. Here I'm taking the sum total of the hard disk space and I'm simply halving it to create two partitions of about equal size. Windows will take up a few meg for its own system partitions. We've got three partitions. The first one that we've set out belongs to Windows, the second one that we're going to be installing on now and the third one we'll get to later. We've skipped past the Windows install because that's absolutely standard. And now we're going to restart the machine and go back in and do exactly the same process a second time. So here again, we're going to select Custom Advanced. This time, you can see the first partition we've already used, this partition two. And now we're going to use that unallocated space and set that up for the second Windows instance. Again, we're going to select New. We're going to use the balance of the drive space, so no need to change that figure. And we're going to click Apply and go through back into the standard Windows install and then the Windows desktop now comes up we essentially have most of the hard work done we have two Windows installs the next job is to go in and to make sure that we can actually identify one install from another because by default they'll both look the same so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the name for the partition using a command line tool called BCD Edit. This is something you're going to have to run as the administrator and you're going to go in and type BCD Edit which is the boot control data store editor and we're going to use that the set command 
and we're going to tell it to set the description to the name we want to appear in the bootloader. BCD edit forward slash set current then description and then the name that we're going to use which in this case is going to be tractor and backup. And below you can see where the Windows Boot Manager example would be used. So there's the complete syntax for you and look that up if you want to see what other options are available in BCD Edit. So we've done that and now we can move on to doing the next piece. We're used to C drives and D drives but as we swap from one partition to another those become relative so having specific labels is going to be much easier in identifying which drive we're really into. So we're simply going to right click on the drive, go to rename it, this one we're going to call Tracked Backup. And the next one we're going to call Tractor Main. We're going to go through a quick restart. We now have the option to decide which boot partition we want to get into. So we'll select main, start it up. And now the next task is to decide which one of those boot partitions we want to boot by default. Go to run. We're going to select main as our default, so we're going to hit select as default or set as default and make all boot settings permanent. So let's take a look at what we've just shown you in the video. Firstly we talked about setting the machine to boot from the DVD drive or whatever media you happen to be using for the install. We showed you the first Windows installation and how we use that custom advanced option to create the custom partition size on our drive. When we created that new partition, we used around half of the available disk space. In the interest of time, we skipped through the rest of the standard Windows installation video. There are plenty of great resources online if you have questions about installing Windows in general, but frankly, Windows 7 doesn't require a whole lot of input anyway. We used the BCD edit command to name our first partition. We went through the same install process again, repeating everything you've just seen. But in this time we selected the remaining free space on the hard drive and used that for the second boot. We renamed each drive letter to match the boot name that we set in BCD Edit, and we used msconfig to set our default boot partition. If there's anything on this video that you don't fully understand, do some extra research before you go making any changes to your system. In particular, make sure you understand the changes that you'll be making and how they'll actually be impacting what you'll be doing. And check out more information on tools like BCD Edit and MSConfig. And again, be sure to back up all your data from your current Windows install.